Jeffco's pro subscription to Actively Learn lets you assign videos from YouTube, your Google Drive, or Actively Learn's own repository, and you'll be able to embed questions for students to answer, and you can track how much time students spend watching the videos. Actively Learn has a pretty big repository of videos and especially content text that you can assign to students for reading and annotating or viewing, and you can import your own, which is what I'll be doing. Before you assign any text or videos, you need to set up classes, which is super easy. Just click the plus in the classes section and add each of your blocks. Students will need to join at one time with this access code that is provided. Actively Learn has some crash course videos, but definitely not all of them. It is worth checking to see if they already have imported the video, because if so, it's likely they have already added some viewing questions to it that you can customize. The video on the War of 1812 that I want is not included in this repository, but it is on YouTube, so I can easily add it to Actively Learn. I can add any video that's on YouTube or that lives in my Google Drive. So to start, I just need to copy the address of the video I want to use. To assign this video, I will go to my Imports tab and choose Add Content Video. If you are adding a video from Google Drive, just make sure the permissions for it are set that anyone with the link can view it. Once the video has been added to your content, just click on it to open it and add some questions. You can click here to add directions for students if necessary. And then just click play to watch the video. You can drag the player along the timeline to skip ahead to specific spots in the video. When you get to a place where you want to add a question, just pause the video and choose add question. You can add short answer, multiple choice questions, or a poll. Just enter the question information, set the correct answer if applicable, and save your question. You will be prompted to align standards if you would like to. When you're done, just choose close and resume video. Enter additional questions similarly. Students will not be able to fast forward in the video if there is a question coming up. So it's very helpful to have at least one question near the end of the video, but make sure there's at least a couple of seconds in the video after it. So the video has a chance to pause prior to just ending. This will give students a chance to actually answer that question. I am not going to add a question at the very end of my video though, so I can show you how the arrangement of questions prevents and allows students to fast forward. When you're all done adding your questions, you just click assign and then select the appropriate classes. One other setup piece that you may choose to do is to add assignment locking, which is sort of like adding a hard due date. To do this, you go to your classes page for each class, choose schedule locking and enter a lock date. Locking simply prevents students from being able to answer questions after the due date or lock date, but if they have completed the assignment, they're still able to open it and see their work. Now let's switch over to student view. Students log in to actively learn with their Google accounts. Students use this little plus here to join each class just one time with your access code. And after that, they simply choose the relevant class and all of the assignments appear on their dashboard. As you can see, the ads at the beginning of the video are removed when the student plays it within the Actively Learn platform. And students can elect to have captions on or off. When students get to a question that you have added, the video pauses automatically and stays paused until the student answers the question. Students get immediate feedback if it's a multiple choice or poll, and the student just chooses close and resume to continue the video. If another question is coming up, the student is not able to skip ahead or fast forward. They can always rewind the video to review sections if necessary, but if there's a question coming up, they need to watch the video in real time. This is my last question in the video. So after the student answers it, she is able to fast forward freely in the video, which is why I recommend that you put a question or even a poll near the end of the video if you don't want students skipping large sections of the video. Student work does autosave, so when a student is done, they just close the tab or go back to their Actively Learn dashboard. I'm going to switch back to Teacher View. 
From my teacher view, I am able to see how much time students spent watching the video. I can view their answers to the questions. And if the question is a short answer question, actively learn supplies this generic rubric for me to use if I want to. Actively Learn gives you a really nice way to engage your students in video viewing. It even works with our Screencastify videos since those save directly to our Google Drive. Just make sure again that the video is shared anyone with the link can view. So you may have to go change that if it's defaulting to Jeffco only. Copy the URL that Google Drive provides in the sharing settings and import that right into Actively Learn. And from here, you can easily add questions along the way to check comprehension and add some nice interactivity to your videos.